Hi, we're going to take a quick look at volume now. Volume is how much space something takes up. Now we could find the volume of, say, uh, a nice rectangular object like uh, this box. Okay, we could find length, width, height, and figure that out. Um, but sometimes we have irregular objects like this one, and I want to find the volume of it. Well, I can't find it through something called displacement, which we'll learn about in just a minute. Um, but for finding volume of a liquid, we're going to use a graduated cylinder. And the cool thing about this, if you look, there's a slight dip in it because water has adhesion. It wants to cling to the sides. It's got, remember, that polar part to it. And we actually read the bottom of that little concave area, and that's called a meniscus. We read the bottom of it. So through displacement, we can find the volume of irregularly shaped solid objects. Through other formulas, pyramids like that, we actually have formulas that we can find to figure that stuff out. For example, the volume of a cube, um, if it's one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, is easily it's one times one times one or one milliliter. Now, this is what's really interesting. When I'm looking at this, a, a millimeter, okay, one milliliter, is equal to one cubic centimeter because that's how we defined what a milliliter was. We actually took a cube and we made it one millimeter by one millimeter by one millimeter on the interior and filled it up with water and we said that's the definition of a milliliter. So a cubic centimeter is the same as a milliliter. Now in conformity what we say is this. The milliliter is usually the unit we use to measure a liquid and a cubic centimeter is what we use to measure the volume of a solid. So solids are usually, usually cubic centimeters and liquids are usually in milliliters. You're going to see that on your water bottles and your pop bottles and things like that. Anything that is um, a liquid is usually done that. Now the reality is it's also completely interchangeable. I would know what you meant if you said one or the other. So what is volume? It's the amount of space matter occupies. So solids, liquids, and gases all have volumes. We can find irregularly shaped objects, the, the volume of it, by using something called displacement. I can use formulas if I've got like a rectangular object, length times width times height, three times three times three is 27 cubic centimeters. But it is important to remember that a centimeter is a length unit. A square centimeter is an area and remember a cubic centimeter is a volume. So we have a variety of volumes. These should all look familiar for math. We can find the volume of a cube and the volume of a rectangular prism, a sphere, a, a right sing, a cylinder, circular cylinder. We can find a circular cone or a three-sided pyramid or a four-sided pyramid. All of those things we can actually find different formulas for that make it work. So let's take a quick look at this. Volume. Volume is the amount of space an object takes up. To demonstrate the metric system units of volume, let's begin with the cubic meter. The cubic meter is slightly bigger than a cubic yard and way too big for most laboratory measurements. So to measure the volume of a liquid, we use the liter. A liter, which is slightly larger than a quart, is equal to 1,000 milliliters. And a milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. This makes a cubic meter equal to 1,000 liters. Okay, so here's a quick trick question. Which has a greater volume? A ton of bricks or a ton of hay? Well, that's not so tricky, right? They both have the same mass. So if I said which weighs more, a ton of bricks or a ton of hay, that, that's a misnomer. They both weigh the same thing. But their volume is different. And that's a big difference to understand. The volume of a ton of hay is going to take up much more space than the really densely packed ton of bricks. And that leads us to the end of this unit, which we're going to get to by the end, which is what is density. Because that takes into account volume and mass. So what tool do we use to measure volume? Well, it's not a thermometer because that's temperature. But remember I said this thing, that graduated cylinder, this can find volume of liquid. So we're going to go with that because again, ruler does distance, triple beam does mass.
what is the basic unit of volume in the metric system? Not ounces, because that is US standard. Grams are weight, meter is length, liter is volume. So our basic unit for volume is a liter. Now, this is reading that meniscus. That is that, oop, well, that's interesting. Why did that make my picture go bigger? When all I wanted was to make the other part bigger. All right, so if we look here, and it's important to read when you're doing graduated cylinders what the gradations are. In this case, between each large, it looks like five, because I'm going up from 40, 45 to 50, which means I've got one, two, three, four. So I'm going up by ones, but sometimes you can go up by twos, and sometimes you can go up by fives or even tens or hundreds if you have a really large graduated cylinder. So the meniscus is this curved part of the liquid, and we read the bottom of that curve is where we're gonna look for it, the meniscus part, the bottom part. Um, and if we go, it's more than 45, and it's not, it's more than 46, but it looks, it's right at 47. So 45, 46, 47. So 47 is my answer. You're going to go ahead and read the meniscus on these. Now be careful, this goes from 60 to seven, that goes by ones. This goes from 30 to 35, so this is going by 0.5. This is going from 75 to 80, that's going by one. This one's going from 45 to 50, that's 0.5. So be careful, and look at this. This goes from two to three. These are going by tenths. So make sure you're looking at what my units are to figure out what your answers are gonna be. All right, so you're gonna do that. Then again, um, the volume of soda. How many milliliters or liters? Well, a can of soda isn't a liter of pop, right? So we're probably not gonna use liter, but for a can, we're probably gonna go ahead and use milliliters, and we're certainly not gonna use a kiloliter because that's a lot. Um, the amount of soda in a two liter pop bottle. Okay, that should give you a clue right there. We're using two liters, so it's going to be a liter. You figure out the last two, the volume of a swimming pool and the amount of water in an eyedropper. Again, we're doing some handy dandy conversions. So how many milliliters, if I have 160 milliliters, how many liters is that? So this is just trying to reinforce that, that conversion because you're gonna have to do it as we go through. Now I'm going to actually go through the next part and not do another video because this is kind of leading into displacement and it's too similar to volume to really worry about it. If I have an irregularly shaped object in here and I want to find out its volume, what I do is I need to figure out how much this little bear's volume is. Okay, well great. But I can't measure length times width times height on this. But what I can do is I can put water in here. And let's say I filled it up to the 20 milliliter mark. And I note that. So I start at 20. Then I put the bear in and my water raises to the 25 milliliter mark. Well, the volume of that bear went from 20 to 25. It's just a simple matter of subtraction. 25 minus 20 means the bear's volume is now 5 milliliters or 5 cubic centimeters because it's a solid. And I could do the same thing with my fly or with a little, I don't know, weird atom-like ball, or I could find the volume of a marble that way. And this one, I went from started at seven, I put the object inside and it raised to nine. So nine minus seven means its volume increased by two units. So you're going to do this, you're going to find the volume of the key and you're going to go through and figure out the volume of the fish and all that good stuff. And then we're going to get to density. So when you're done with volume, um, come back and look at the density video.